On today's episode of Watch Jergo, we are here with my 2004 Volvo XC90 that I got for free. And in the last episode, we fixed the heater core. Oh, there's the old one right there. And now today we have to fix the rest of the cooling system. What is going on guys? I'm Watch Jergo, and like I said, today we're here with my 2004 Volvo XC90 the second year this thing was imported into the USA. And we've got a bunch of parts for you guys today from my friends at FCP Euro. Now you saw this in the last video, I told you guys what the plan was. Today we're gonna go over what we're actually doing here. And the most important thing that was broke on this car was this thermostat housing. And it's not actually the thermostat housing, that doesn't break that often. This nipple right here that screws in, that breaks very, very often. So apparently it's plastic from the factory this one is actually metal and uh, this line goes back to the coolant reservoir. You do need that to be intact and not broken. That's one of the leaks on this car. We've got new gaskets. We've got a new thermostat. We're gonna change the whole housing uh, except for the outer piece because that's definitely not broken. Uh, I will put links to all of this good stuff in the description below if you need to rebuild your XC90's cooling system. So let's get after it. It's time to get in here and start shredding this thing uh, the thermostat housing is straight down underneath the uh, timing belt and the timing uh, pulleys and all that good stuff. So we're going to have to get all of this out of here, power steering reservoir, coolant reservoir. I'm just gonna go ahead and pull all these clamps, get this out of the way. Then we'll be able to actually access this thermostat housing that's just way down inside here. If you look straight down in there where that hole is, that's the broken off nipple for the thermostat housing. And instead of fixing that, I figured we'd just go ahead and replace the thermostat housing, everything while we're in here make it easy and uh, keep it from failing again in the future. We are a few minutes in, we're making a lot of progress. As you can see, the uh, expansion tanks out, power steering, you just kind of push that out of the way. The headlights on this are amazing. You just pull up two pins and they come out. One connector on the headlights removes the entire harness. And then uh, I took the box out, the cooling box that surrounds the ECUs, and I started pulling the side off the thermostat housing, which you now have an excellent view of. You can actually just see the thermostat chilling in there. Well, check out that problem, it came out and half of the side cover fell on the ground and the rest of it came out in my hand. So uh, I'm gonna say that's another very, very big leak and we are in trouble because that, I don't have that part and uh, I don't think it's gonna be very easy to get. It didn't even show up in the parts search when I was looking all this up. Uh, also the thermostat, let's pop that out of there since we're, since we're in here, you guys are bearing witness to the fun. Oh, gross. We're gonna need to uh, push this thing out of the way and <laughs> clean up my mess. I thought that might happen. Anyway, that gasket looks horrible. The thermostat looks horrible. We have a new temp sensor. We have a new housing. We are taking all of this off the engine and making it right. I do think once we uh, throw that new housing on there, this thing will be ready to go, much nicer than it has been before. Now to get the thermostat housing off, there's, there's quite a bit of work you have to do. There's a screw there. Uh, these are T40s, T40s. There's one down there that's kind of impossible to get to because there's no uh, distance between the frame rail and that thermostat housing. And there's another one down there. You can use a ratchet to get these ones and I have this one just about out. It's still a ton of work. And to do that very last one down there in the corner, you have to build yourself a setup like this with your uh, T40 and something to grab the shank like a quarter inch wrench. And then I have an extension we're gonna use on that to break this loose. These are insanely tight. No luck getting this on here. Who engineered this job? Okay, I'm gonna go with uh, the Swedes. <laughs> yeah. Swede speed. Okay, let's see if we can do this. <laughs> no! There's nothing to... No yeah, I, I can't move it at all. Even now that we're in there. Okay, I think I got it. Let's see if this works. 
Come on. Oh, yeah. All right. Now I can take out all this nonsense and unscrew that thing by hand. This is going to take a while. But I think I can get just the bit in there now, and twist that thing out, and then go back and get the others out. And then we're going to pry that thing off of there and hopefully just swap out the thermostat housing. We are still stuck though without this cover, and I know it's gonna be hard to find one of these covers. So there's four bolts in the actual housing itself. That was the last one. Uh, these were, well, of course this one's not, but they were covered in like RTV or something, which is why they were stuck stuck. And now, let's see, let's see if we can pry this thing out of here without, oh, look, look at that. It just fell right off. No prying necessary. So, this has definitely been changed. And, where does it even connect? Wow, this is the connector for that temp sensor. You have to pull the center cover. There is a lot to do to get that out of there. But we got the housing off, which is good. And now we've got a lot of clean to do. There's a whole bunch of RTV in there. You can see how just nasty this thing is. It's been replaced, it's been poorly replaced. That's just facts. Um, well, let me get to it. It turns out we do not have that sensor, so I don't need to replace it. I just need to get it out of the old housing, which is, it looks like a 18 millimeter. Crescent. <laughs> yeah, this was a, this should have been one of those metric crescent wrenches. That's the right tool for the job. Okay, now for the fun part. This isn't attached to anything and we need a, a lot of leverage. <clears throat> did that work? It did, it did. Color me amazed. All right, popping that temp sensor out of here. There we go, I'll clean that up. We'll put a little thread sealant on there, put that back together. And then we need to put some thread sealant on our new thermostat housing clean out our mess there, clean all that RTV off, and put this thing on. So I do want to thread seal that nipple that screws in, and of course you have to make sure it's oriented correctly, which is what that sensor, sensor goes in there, which means this thing sticks out front like that. So, yeah, we're gonna tighten that thing on down, make sure it doesn't leak, and then we can put on our new metal gaskets, put some RTV on this, and have at least part of it wrapped up. All right, we are headed to LKQ. We got the tool bag loaded up over there. And uh, let's go see if we can get one of those covers, a broken cover for the thermostat housing there. That thing's hard to find. All the pictures actually show that it comes with it. Uh, but when you order it, apparently it doesn't. As we are out here at LKQ, we got a bag with just a couple tools in it. I figure I can get that thing apart with just the Torx drivers and a 10 millimeter. And uh, honestly, that's about all I brought was a 10 and a straight bit screwdriver so we can pop that housing off. So we are looking for trucks. It said it's in trucks row V. I'm sure we got a long way to go to find that thing. And then uh, hopefully it's there. Hopefully there's still an engine in this car. <laughs> hopefully nobody went after the thermostat housing other than me. Um, I just called Volvo and Volvo told me that the thermostat housing is always sold with that cover. Unfortunately, that's what everything shows on the internet too, but that's not how the Ryan part works. So they expect your cover to be intact. We are on the hunt for trucks. These guys are working today. I've actually never seen them in here running this thing before, but that's where their compactor is. It's where they bring the vehicles in over there. They drain all the fluids. And over here is where they crush them and ship them out once they've lived their life cycle in the salvage yard. Jackpot, there's our XC90 now. Tell me it's got an engine. Look how high up that thing is. How are you supposed to work on them when they're seven foot in the air? Tell them to come over here, pick this thing up, put it back down on the ground. Oh, it's got an engine. It's all here. Yeah. I think we just hit the jackpot. This one is nearly cleaner than mine. It looks like it's got a brand new AC condenser in there. Um, or, oh, that's the intercooler the condensers right here. And, uh, Radiator is like looking a little original there. I'm not sure I have that scoop. I might take that. Let's see if there's anything else I need. This one's in just incredible shape. So mine has ants, but this one clearly had mice. You can see the carpet is destroyed 
amplifier for the audio looks a little cleaner than mine, which is kind of crazy. Mine's just dirty. Somebody pulled all the electronics out of this thing. It must've had an aftermarket radio. You can see all that amp wiring down in there, that eight gauge cable. Let's see. Face plate's gone. The interior of this was wrecked, but the engine was somehow taken care of. Door handles don't work. Time to strip all this plastic out of our way. Volvo did the timing belt on this one. We're almost there. You can see I got the first screw out of the housing, uh, all the plastic stacked up right there. And guess what? As soon as I tugged on that, the plastic and that uh, little nipple off the thermostat housing snapped right off. So uh, that's gotta be really common and uh, definitely replace that with the metal one if you can. This should be it. I've got the three screws out. That factory gasket looks a lot nicer than that RTV. Hey, all right. The whole thing looks a lot better than mine. Time to get that back out of there now. Ah, look at that. <sighs> that, I, I think I just won the lottery with this piece. Uh, you cannot buy this thing. Volvo is texting me the parts diagrams right now and telling me that we couldn't get it if I needed it. And we're out of here, it's raining and it's starting to pick up. And uh, even that engine cover needed a bracket and that bracket is covered up by the turbo systems charge pipes. There's no way I'm getting any of that out of there. Um, so I just had to leave it behind. Everybody's wandering around with uh, window shades over their heads to try to act like umbrellas. $14.87 later, we are headed back to the shop with our unobtainium part, uh, which is, I mean, legit. You have to buy a whole nother housing from Volvo if you want that front cover. And I think they charge like three or 400 for that housing. The Ryan part's only like 187 bucks. So uh, I would say if, if that's broken on yours, I first, I hope it's not. And second, find another car you can get one off of. <laughs> anyway, uh, it didn't cost too terribly much and uh, didn't take too much getting uh, wet in this rainstorm. Luckily, you know, you can just sit under the hood of the car and work on it. And we are headed back to the shop to grab some lunch and put this back together. And we are at O'Reilly's to pick up our RTV. And that should be all we need to finish this thing up. All right, that's all we needed. Some uh, water pump RTV and we are out of here. Thanks guys. Take care. Back in the shop with my new uh, thermostat housing cover here. We've got our carbide gasket scraper and this is working pretty well on here. You can see all this old gasket. I say that and then, okay, it is definitely coming off very quick. So scraping off all this old junk. I've got the Milwaukee here so we can use the bristle brush, but honestly that bristle brush, it got used on the headliners, it's about done. There's not any bristle left on the brush. So hopefully the carbide scraper gets it. Here's our water pump RTV from O'Reilly's. Open up a brand new thing of it because I obviously, you know, when you need it, you can never find the one that you already had open. So we'll go ahead and pop that guy open there. Lay a bead down. This is gasketed, so I'm sure it doesn't need much RTV, but I'm just gonna go ahead and run the whole ceiling surface just kind of like that. Whoever did this before put so much RTV on it. I mean, you guys saw the squeeze out. It was massive. You do not need that much RTV. Now the fun part is when this thermostat housing goes on, that wire for the temp sensor wraps around the thermostat housing and you have to get all of this done at once. So you have to get this gasket on there, you have to get the thermostat housing lined up, you gotta get a bolt in while you're holding all that together and keeping the wires in the back of the housing, which is pretty crazy. I'll try to show this to you right now. The housing's already in there because we plugged in the sensor, or screwed the sensor in. This is where the wire goes, in that trough. So you gotta kinda bend the thing around, work it all in there, like so, and then put the gasket in, and then put this all together. Volvo was like, <laughs> mechanics? <laughs> this gets assembled before the engine goes in. So taking this thing apart, uh, we were able to just use a standard socket drive Torx driver and this wrench. Well, now there's really no clearance putting it back together. So I'm using a tiny little T30 driver bit and a quarter inch wrench. And luckily it has like a shank on it so I can like ratchet it while holding it in with one finger. So that's what's going on right now. It's taking a very long time. I probably have, not to mention getting the wire back behind it since we didn't take the sensor out. I probably have 25, 30 minutes in getting the housing back in like that is pure that's what nightmares are made of trying to get a wire back in the gasket goes over the wire so if you don't get it all done correctly it doesn't go together 
So what I ended up doing was using the RTV to hold the gasket on the engine block, threading the thing through probably 20 times, and then finally getting everything lined up and a screw started, and it's together. I mean, <laughs> some of this car is very, very well engineered and thought out. This one, they were like, it goes on once when the engine goes in. All right, the last piece of this thermostat puzzle, and we pretty much have this wrapped up except for the new hoses. So I'm putting all the new RTV on here and uh, we can put the cover on the thermostat housing and put the thermostat itself in. And that knocks out the majority of this cooling system rebuild. The hoses shouldn't take too long. The heater core hoses though, I'm gonna have to lift this thing up and that's gonna be a whole nother day of work. After it took all this time to get this housing cover, the thermostat on this is keyed. I'm gonna put the vent up, the little bypass there, and uh, you'll see how it's keyed. It has to go this direction, straight up and down. And then, this is also a lot harder once this little nipple's installed. Okay, so there's our thermostat, all seated. What do you think, Jake? It is a thermostat. Yeah, I agree. That, that should keep therm. I've seen a lot of thermostats in my day, and that definitely is one. <laughs> wow, we are experts then. So there's a little retainer nib inside this cover that pushes on the thermostat, keeps it from falling out, and I will just slap that guy on there. Slap chop. <laughs> Everyone's favorite guy. You'll be slapping your cares <laughs> away. <laughs> uh, I lost the tins that there's some tin, ah, found them. I found the tens. Cool, so those three bolts hold that cover on. This is the last thing we are doing on this bad boy today. And a lot of people have been asking me where the gold ratchet has been. And you can see this one is a silverish color. And here you can see that it's like a whitish silver color. That's because this is actually a platinum ratchet. We upgraded from the gold ratchet quite a while ago. And I wanted to, you know, kind of test it out. They, they say move in silence. So I wanted to make sure we tested out this ratchet off camera quite a bit. So uh, it works, it's still a ratchet. It has the same teeth as uh, your normal couple dollar ratchet. It is a normal couple dollar ratchet, but uh, yeah, it's platinum, platinum ratchet. Bring me the platinum ratchet. Now that one there is just silver, no big deal. The standard silver coated. That's the kind of, that, that's the kind of ratchet you take to your wedding. I don't, I don't, what? I don't, wedding child. Well, wedding silver, you know. I would say it's done, and it's possibly. I don't know. It's, you would say that, but is it actually? So, well, like, it's probably at the point where you should stop. That's that's what I'm saying, because I don't know the torque spec, and it's, you know, hand tight. But it is a metal gasket that crushes, so I just definitely don't want to strip these screws because it is all aluminum. So. So we're ready to stick the covers back on, reassemble all this good stuff. Um, the only thing that's left is those hoses. That is it for today, guys. The free Volvo is almost there. Maybe one more day of work and I'll have it all wrapped up. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to shopwatchjerrygo.com where you can get cool shirts just like this. And please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you want to do. And I will talk to you next time. All right, let's wrap this job up. She done. All of this drama because of this, Jake. Can you believe it? It is broken. <laughs> A little bit. That's what water does. There is your issue.